that after I have talked a little while, you might think it worthwhile to ask questions. But first, if I may, I would like to talk about the whole problem of existence. Probably, you know as well as the speaker, what is actually taking place in the world. Utter chaos, disorder, violence, extreme forms of brutality, riots, ending up in war, whether it is in Vietnam or in the Middle East or elsewhere. And knowing how extraordinarily difficult, confused, and contradictory our lives are, not only in ourselves, inside the skin, as it were, but also outwardly, utter destruction. All the values are changing from day to day. There is no respect, no authority, and nobody, at least those who are aware and thinking, no faith in anything whatsoever, neither in the church, nor in the establishment, nor in any philosophy. So one is left absolutely to oneself to find out what is one to do. What is one to do in this chaotic world? What is the right action, if there is such a thing as right action? I'm sure each one of us talks or asks, what is the right conduct? And this is a very serious question, and I hope those of you who are here are really serious because this is not a gathering of for philosophical or religious entertainment. We are not indulging in any theory, in any philosophy, or bringing from the East, some exotic, foreign ideas. What we are going to do together is to examine very closely, objectively, non-sentimentally or emotionally, facts as they are. And for that, to explore, there must be freedom. Freedom from prejudice. Freedom from any conditioning, from any philosophy, from any belief. Because we are going to explore together 
very slowly, patiently, hesitantly, to find out. It's like good scientists looking through a precision machine microscope and seeing exactly the same thing. Because if you are a scientist in the laboratory, using the microscope, you must convince or show exactly what you see to another scientist. So that both of, both of them see exactly what is. And that's what we're going to do. There is no your microscope or the speaker's microscope. There is only one microscope, a precision instrument through which we are going to observe. And in the observation of it, learn. Not learn according to your temperament, to your conditioning, or to a particular form of belief or religious idiosyncrasy or propaganda, but merely observe what actually is, and thereby, through observation, learn. And in the learning is the doing. Learning is not separate from action. So, what we are going to do first is to understand what it means to communicate. We have not only to use words, which are inevitable, but also much more important is to go beyond the words, which means that you and the speaker together are going to take a journey of exploration, of investigation. So, so it is a matter where each one of us are in constant communion with each other. That is, sharing together, exploring together, observing together. For that word, communication, means that. Partaking, sharing, together. And therefore, there is no teacher or the disciple. There is not the speaker to whom you listen, either agreeing or disagreeing which would be absurd. But if we are communicating together, then there is no question of agreement or disagreement, because we are both of us are looking. Both of us are examining, not from your point of view or from the speaker's point of view, that's why it's very important to find out how to observe, how to look with clear eyes, how to listen so that there is no distortion. So it is your responsibility as well as the speaker's responsibility to share together, 
we are going to work together. And so this is not an entertainment, neither intellectual nor emotional. And this must be, if we may point out very clearly from the beginning, this must be very clearly understood. We are not indulging any form of sentimentality or emotionalism. Therefore, it's no longer a question of entertainment, but a matter of such gravity, of such seriousness, that both the, the listener and the speaker are together going to find out, together going to examine and find out what the truth, and from that, what action should come about. If this is clear, then we can proceed, that you and the speaker, being free from our prejudices, from our beliefs from our particular conditioned knowledge, free to examine, bearing in mind that we are using a precision instrument, the microscope, and you and the speaker must see the same thing, otherwise it will not be possible to communicate together. And as this is a very serious matter, you must not only be free to examine, but free to apply, free to test it out in daily life, not keep it merely as a theory or as a principle towards which you are working. So, bearing in mind that we are not bringing in Indian philosophy, any Indian belief or any quoting, any book, because all those such things are rather immature and infantile. Now let us look what is actually going on in the world. violence of every kind, not only outwardly, but violence in our relationship with each other, there is division between people, nationalistic, religious division. the Catholic and the Protestant, the Hindu and the Muslim, and so on. Infinite divisions, each against the other, both politically, nationally, religiously, and individually. And there is great conflict both inwardly, in our relationships, and also outwardly. Now, what is one to do? Knowing that every minute there is a change going on, 
not only technologically, but inwardly. Seeing this vast, far confusion, immense sorrow, What am I to do? What are you to do? Can you look to anybody to tell you what to do? To the priest, to the church, to the specialist, to the analyst? Because they have not brought about peace in the world. They have not brought about happiness, joy, freedom to live. So where are you to look? And if you assume the responsibility of your own authority as an individual, because you have no longer any faith outwardly, in outward authority. We are using the word authority advisedly in a particular sense of that word. Then, will you look for your own authority inwardly? You as an individual? The word individuality means indivisible, not separable, not fragmented. Individuality means a totality, the whole. And the word whole means healthy, holy, H-O-L-Y. And no, and you are not an individual, because you are not sane. You are broken up, fragmented in yourself. You are in contradiction in yourself. Separated, contradictory. Therefore, you are not an individual at all. So how can you ask out of this fragmentation, assume or ask that one fragment assume authority over the other fragments? Please do see this very clearly. Because this is what we are examining very closely. Because we see education, science, organized religion, propaganda, politics have failed. They have not brought about peace in the world. Though technologically, man has advanced incredibly, but man remains as he's been for thousands of years, fighting, greedy, envious, angry, violent, brutal, and burdened with great sorrow. That is the fact. That is not an assumption. So, to find out what to do, in a world that is so confused, so violent, so utterly unhappy, 
we have to examine not only what living is, actually as it is, but also we have to understand what love is. And also what it means to die. And also we have to understand what man has for thousands and millions years has been trying to find out if there is a reality which transcends all thought. Until you understand this whole picture, all the complexity of it, Just to say, what am I to do with regard to a particular fragment has no meaning whatsoever. You have to understand the whole of existence, not just a part of it. However tiresome, however agonizing, however brutal that part is, You have to see the whole picture. The picture of what love is, what meditation is. If there is such thing as God, what it means to live, we have to understand this whole phenomenon of existence as a whole. And then only you can ask the question, what am I to do? And if you see this whole picture, probably you will never ask that question. Then you will be living. And when you have seen that picture and living, then the living is the right action. So first, we are going to say what, it, what is living and what is not living. To observe. So we have to understand what that word means. The word to observe, to see, to hear, to learn. To see, to hear, and to learn. What does it mean to see? Because we are going to see the whole picture <coughs> of life, of existence, not just one fragment. Because we are human beings, not Americans, not black people or brown people, communists, socialists, Hindus, Roman Catholics, and so on. We are human beings. And we have this immense problem. You have not the problem of a Catholic that just mere a label. That's the result of 2,000 years of propaganda. And propaganda doesn't make for religion. It makes for hierarchical, religious, organized bureaucracy, which has nothing whatsoever to do with religion. So we're going to find out together what it means to look, to observe, 
You know, when we are together, looking at something, it doesn't mean togetherness. It means that you and the speaker are going to look. What does that word mean to look? It's quite a difficult thing to look. It's quite, one has to have an art to uh, look. You know, you have never looked probably at a tree. Because when you do look, all your botanical knowledge comes in and prevents you from observing actually as it is. Probably you have never looked at your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend. You have never looked because you have an image about her or him and that image is going to prevent you from looking. The image that you have built about her or him, the image that you have about yourself. And so these images are going to prevent you from looking. And therefore, when you look, there is distortion, there is contradiction. So, when you look, there must be a relationship between the observer and the thing observed. Please do listen to this, because it, it needs great care. You know, when you have something to care, you do observe very closely. Which means when you have great affection, then you, have, then you are capable of observing. So together means to observe with care, with affection, so that we see the same thing together. So the first thing <coughs> about seeing is the freedom from the image. The freedom from the image that you have about yourself. Please do it as it is being said. Because the speaker is merely a mirror. And therefore, what you see is yourself in the mirror. So the speaker is in no way important. What is important is what you see in that mirror. And to see very clearly, precisely, without any distortion, every form of image must go. The image that you are an American or a Catholic or a Protestant, or that you are a rich man, poor man, you are prejudiced, and all that stupid nonsense must go to observe. And there go the moment you see clearly what is there in front of you. Because 
What you see is much more important than what you should do from what you see. Because the moment you see very clearly, there is action from that clarity. It's only the mind that is chaotic, contradictory, confused, choosy, that says, what am I to do? But when the mind sees something very clearly, when the mind sees the danger of nationalism, of separatism, the division between peoples as religious and so on, the division. And that division is the greatest danger. Because in division there is insecurity. There's war. There's uncertainty. And when you see it, not intellectually, not emotionally, but actually see the danger of division. There is a totally different kind of action. So it's very important to learn to see, to observe, And what is it we are observing? Not the outer phenomenon only, but the inward state of man. Because unless there is fundamental radical revolution in the psyche, in the very being, in the very root of one's being, mere trimming, mere legislation on the periphery has very little meaning. So what we are concerned is whether man as he is can radically bring about transformation in himself. 